But tonight, we're going to start at my, a place I was when I was four years old, when I was talking to my brother, my older brother Lloyd, older than me by about two years, about the shape of the universe. And Lloyd, being older, was instructing me about the idea of the universe is all that is, all the space there is. And he said to me, if the universe had an edge, then you could go to that edge and put your hand through. And the space on the other side would have to be part of the universe, too. <laughs> well, if only I had known today what I, if I'd known then what I know today, um, I would have first pointed out, Look, an, ar an indirect argument, an argument by the method of indirect proof. But I also might have said, there's a problem with that reasoning about going to the edge of the universe and putting your hand through. What if you can't get there from here? What if your experience is like the experience of this being, whom I will have occasion to refer to as a Poincarite? What if all matter the matter that composes you and all of your measuring devices and everything you know shrinks as you approach this edge of the universe. And it's important for me to point out that this is a two-dimensional representation. Some people viewing this might see this little Poincaré as getting farther away. No, this is a flatlander, an essentially two-dimensional being. Well, have you ever thought about this? How do you know that you don't change size as you move about the universe? How do I know that I'm the same size in Washington as I was in California? Well, we're going to enter a hypothetical universe where my hypothesis is that this Poincarite's ruler is not changing size. Stranger things have happened. And I have to insist that there is nothing on or below that line. So if you try to tell me what about the part of the universe down there, I'll say there is nothing on or below that line. This is a particular famous two-dimensional model of hyperbolic geometry. I forgot to say its title is the Poincaré Upper Half Plane. More about Poincaré in a moment, but I just can't emphasize enough that this is an essentially two-dimensional model. Um, and to fend off an inevitable question about whether this is the shape of our universe or is this some weird mathematician's construct, I have to say that the jury is still out. There are people who have some evidence about maybe the universe does have some features like this model. So it's not just a crazy model, although I think it will lead us to a discussion of great mathematical interest. So here are my goals. The first is, how do Poincarites go straight? In the sense of, what if they wish to travel along a straightest possible path? What would that be like for them with their different concept of measurement of distances? How do you move Poincarites around? Suppose I wanted to make a little video showing these beings moving in this hypothetical universe, and then the wallpaper of the Poincarites, which I think would make a lovely title for an opera that I would like to see. <laughs> <laughs> some of you may know some specialized vocabulary that applies here. To say these three points in fancier terms, I want to talk about hyperbolic <coughs> geodesics, Geodesics being a fancy name for the straightest possible path. I want to talk about hyperbolic isometries. Isometries being the transformations that move things around without changing their size. And these wallpaper functions actually have the name modular functions. So if you know the modular group, modular functions, number theory, that's what these images really are. 